Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. In this video, I'm going to cover this interesting and pretty unique mini AliEx motherboard from China. This is a no-name motherboard that does not have brand, that does not have official packaging, and the AliExpress store is also pretty shady. The motherboard has a marking, which also doesn't mean much, and it says BKHD 1151 NP17. So what's so special or so interesting about this motherboard? This one seems to be suiting very well for home NAS devices, for private firewall or private routers running PFSense or some similar application. The motherboard itself comes with the Intel LJ1151 socket, but unlike the official Intel motherboards that are limited to either Core 6, 7 generation CPUs or Core 8, 9 generation CPUs or the Xeon alternatives, this one does not have such limitations. And this one works with Intel Core 6, 7, 8 and 9 gen, also with the Xeon E3, V5, V6, and I assume it also supposed to work with the 8 9 gen uh, Xeon E hyphen something. These Xeon E hyphen something are still pretty expensive and I don't have any on hand to test, but in theory that shall work. Okay, uh, that's enough of my blah blah blah. Let me switch the camera and zoom into the motherboard so I can tell you a bit more in details what we have on the motherboard and after that I will go step by step with all my test results to tell you what's working and what's not working on this motherboard. On my secondary channel you will find unboxing video of this motherboard if you would like to see how it comes uh, from AliExpress. Here I'm going to quickly go through the tech specs because the motherboard is pretty unique and you need to understand what we deal with. So starting from the top to bottom, over here we have 8 SATA ports and 8 SATA ports are very good for NAS devices and most of the mini ITX motherboards they have either 4 or maximum 6 SATA ports. So 8 SATA ports is very good if you want a compact NAS device. Then over here we have two slots for DDR4 memory which is a standard configuration for mini ITX size. Over here we have two headers for COM ports. I have no idea what these COM ports would be used for, but we have them. Then we have front panel LEDs and buttons. And what these jumpers are doing, I honestly have no idea. This is a SIM card port, I assume, because on the back side of the motherboard we have a mini PCI Express slot to install a Wi-Fi or 4G, 5G modems. This is a PCI Express 3.0 x8 slot and unfortunately it is physically here covered or limited so you cannot install PCI Express x16 cards. You would need to have a riser or figure out how to unlock it to install your card. And even if it would be unlocked you can see that over here we have lots of connectors so the graphics card or any other PCI Express x16 card could interfere with these and cause problems. Then over here we have USB connectors for the front panel, this is USB 2, this is USB 3. And over here we have an additional jumper which is auto start jumper. So if you would want your motherboard to always start when power goes on, you can use this jumper for that. A little post recording addition. The motherboard uses Intel C236 chipset which was originally limited to Xeon E3 V5 V6 CPUs. Then here we have uh, the CMOS battery, which is pretty common for mini ITX compact motherboards to have it in a vertical rather than horizontal placement. And here we have a full-sized uh, M.2 slot for PCI Express NVMe SSD drives. And here comes the interesting part. Over here we have four Ethernet adapters and all four of them are Intel 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. I really don't know why you would want four of them, but I guess if you're building a private PFSense router then it would be handy. For a NAS device, one or maximum two is more than enough. Here we have a simple audio exit, which works, but the quality is not that great. And here we have uh, two USB 3 ports, two extra USB 3 ports, and then we have DisplayPort and HDMI. 
On the other side of the motherboard, we also see a few components. First, we have a mini PCI Express slot over here, where I suppose you need to install either Wi-Fi card or 5G, 4G modem in combination with this uh, SIM card slot. Unfortunately, I don't have any mini PCI Express devices to test if this is actually working or not, but the slot is over here. And then you can also see that the motherboard has a VRM which spans across both sides of the motherboard. This is the VRM controller. We have four plus two phases. These four phases are for the CPU and these two phases are for the memory. So we have one MOSFET per phase on the back side. And in addition to that, we also have two MOSFETs per phase on the front size. So four over here and eight over here. Regarding the VRM, I can't say much, but the specification you see on your screen, and according to Bias I Engineer, this VRM is good enough for peak power of 135 watts and for the sustained load at about 90-95 watts. Now let's talk about the test results. I ran my checklist through this BKHD1151 and P17 motherboard and then done something extra as well. Starting with the CPUs, I have tested the Xeon E3 1245V6, Core i3-8100 and Core i5-8400. The first two CPUs are quad cores and the Core i5 is a 6-core CPU. For memory, I have tested two sticks 8GB each, G-Skill DDR4-3200, then I have also tested two sticks 32GB each, Corsair DDR4-3600, and finally I have tested one stick 16GB DDR4-3200 ECC UDIM memory stick. Here I have just one stick, that's why it was not tested as a pair. All of the memory modules worked out of the box, but of course the DDR4 3200 or 3600 speed was not achievable. For USB ports I don't have any complaints. USB ports, USB 2, USB 3 and SATA 3 ports, all of them worked with no issues. Smartphone works as well, but just like with any other Chinese motherboard, we can only control speed of 4-pin PWM fans. The 3-pin fans work at 100% speed. And even if you use 4-pin PWM fans, and even though the speed is controlled in HW monitor or other monitoring software, the fan speed is reported wrongly. Moving on to the PCI Express devices, the PCI Express X8 slot works just as it should. It is PCI Express 3.0 X8. Even though it is physically limited for installation of X8 cards only, I have got myself an X8 to X16 riser and tested with my NVIDIA Titan V. The graphics card worked just fine, but of course the bandwidth was cut from X16 to X8. The M.2 slot is connected to the CPU and it is also PCI Express 3.0. The bandwidth is full X4. It works just fine with every SSD I tested except of my crucial P3 4TB. For whatever reason, when I install this SSD, the motherboard hangs at the boot screen. I have also tried to install the same crucial P3 SSD into the PCI Express X8 slot with an adapter and I received the same problem. So I assume there is something wrong with the BIOS that is not fully compatible with this SSD. The mini PCI Express slot on the back side of the motherboard I did not test because I don't have any devices for that and regarding the audio quality I can't really say much. The audio works, the quality is not the best, but it's there. The network ports work just fine. I have tested all four of them and all four of them give me 2.5 gigabit speed. The BIOS chip on the motherboard is the Winbond W25Q128FV. This BIOS can be read and flushed using fptw.exe under Windows. Even though this is not an x99 motherboard, I added support for this no-name motherboard to my Mi899 application. There you will find the stock BIOS as well as slightly modified BIOS to unlock RAM timings. 
Regarding the VRM, I cannot add much more. It works, and with all tested CPUs, I did not receive any problems. Testing with the Xeon E3 1245v5, after 30 minutes of ADA64 stress test, the VRM barely heated up to 55 degrees Celsius, and this is without any heat sinks on the MOSFETs. So, if you're planning to use two, four, or six core low powered Intel LJ1151 CPUs, you don't need to worry about the VRM. In terms of features, this mini ITX motherboard is not ideal, which is expected. Sleep mode does not work, and the CPU overclocking with RAM timings are not available in the BIOS by default. These features are there, but they are hidden from the menu. So I slightly modified the BIOS to enable these menu options, and XMP with RAM timings are available. CPU overclocking is also available, but I do not have any unlocked LG1151 CPU to verify if it works or doesn't work. For the RAM timings, I have to say that even though the options are there and they are actually working, it is very tricky to tune memory on this motherboard. Very often when I try to increase the memory speed or tighten the timings, the motherboard would fail to boot with some beeps. It is disappointing to hit these limitations, but it is nice to see that the motherboard actually gives you a feedback that it is failing to boot because of your RAM settings. If you have ECC UD memory installed and your CPU supports ECC memory, such as Xeon E3 or Core i3 CPUs, then this motherboard also supports ECC. I have tested 16GB ECC UD memory stick with the Xeon E3 E1245 V6 and Core i3 8100. With both of these CPUs ECC mode is enabled and fully functional. Of course, with Core i5 that does not support ECC mode, the ECC memory stick still works, but in a non-ECC mode. Resizable bar and PCI Express buffication are unfortunately not available for this motherboard. Restore on power loss and clear CMOS work just fine. I have also done some idle power consumption measurements. With the Xeon E3 1245V6, idle power consumption is only 17 watts, which is pretty good. With Core i3-8100 and Core i5-8400, idle power consumption is around 18 watts. I have no idea why Core i3 and Core i5 consume slightly more at idle, but I seen these results consistently. Additionally, I can mention that the power consumption sensor on the motherboard seems to be working just fine. Ok, judging by the test results, this no-name Mini ITX motherboard from China is not ideal, but it is also not a disaster. The bigger question is, can we trust this motherboard, our data, can we trust it to build our home NAS or home PFSense server? Unfortunately, this I cannot answer. I had only very limited time with this motherboard, and during this limited time it behaved well. How it's gonna behave in a month, in two months, in a year, in two years, I have absolutely no idea. But what I do know is that I am trying to convince bias I engineer to make a good bias for this motherboard. If that happens, we will get a much more reliable hardware plus a software package. Before that, I can recommend this mini ITX motherboard or any other Chinese solution for non-mission critical devices only. If you have a NAS device that must be online 24-7, or if you're making a router for your home security, then under no circumstances I can recommend this or any other Chinese alternative. On the other hand, if your NAS is not mission critical, or if you're having just a router for your kids to ensure that they are not accessing what they shall not, and if you don't mind some instability or potential hardware failure, then this motherboard seems to be very well packed for such use case. There are lots of cheap and very cheap LJ1151 CPUs, and the DDR4 memory prices are also going down significantly, so all in all, you can get a pretty power-efficient mini ITX NAS or PFSense router for a pretty decent price. So, with that I have to say, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting to explore this Chinese non-name motherboard, see you in the next videos, and bye-bye.